it best to spray epoxy over fresh blasted steel? Uh, yes, absolutely. I would spray a two-part epoxy on that sucker. Um, let it flash for about two hours, give or take. And then mix up some filler primer. Okay, some 2K filler primer. And coat it two heavy coats with filler primer and then you should be good um with blocking and uh you know glaze putty if need if needed and if you got to do body work you could actually scuff that and then put some body filler over the primer and then reprime it um what do you mean or 80 grit first well if it's blasted as in media blasted you could just spray right over it if it's bare steel, you can spray right over it. If you want to scuff it up a little with 80 grit, you could. It's not going to hurt. You know, just give it a quick 30 second scuff, you know, whatever panel you're working on and you and you should be you should be golden. Basically, I don't know if you guys remember what this panel looked like. Right? We had some flames in it. Um I know it looks like crap now. We got many different colors. And this is something that you don't want to put base coat on top of something like this. You're going to definitely get a chemical reaction. This here that you see, that's raw plastic. That's literally the plastic material. YouTube. Okay, cool, cool, guys. Um, the purple is the original paint. And then we actually did the yellow seven years ago we painted this thing and when we did it we we flamed out some flames and we pinstriped it with a vinyl decal and clear coated over it so i had to use 80 grit on this to take out all of the decals and the flames right so i used 80 grit got all that out i went down to a 320 grit you know, smoothing it out even more, the whole whole panel. Here, I still a little glossy in here. I have to actually sand in here. Just with my hand, I'm going to hit it. And then we're going to 2K filler prime the whole thing, wash it down, and wet sand it really nice, and it'll be ready for paint. Okay, so that's what this front panel looks like. Uh, goes on a 1998 Honda Elite. You guys are going to see the complete build. Um, we had flames on one side of the panel, and then the other panel was just plain but it's all sanded down ready to go we got our headpiece sanded down and be i wasn't going to prime this right but because i used the da i cut through see if this was this was perfectly painted yellow with clear coat on it it looked really good if i took my time and wet sanded with my hand i could have just scuffed everything up and i could have put base coat right on top of it any color new base coat right on top followed by my candy and clear coat, right? But because I burned through, I used the DA, I kind of cheated, kind of sanded this thing quick. I burned through a little bit on some edges here. Um, if you guys can see that, All right? So now it's like, I might as well prime it because you could probably get away with basing this as is, um, but I would make sure you base lightly over the raw plastic area, you know, like pieces like that. But, um, you know, I'm going to be doing a 2K filler primer, so I'm like, let me just prime the whole thing, get it one color, wet sand it, clean, give it a nice clean cut with 400 grit, and um, and paint it. Now, I'm curious about how much air moves in your shop. Can you turn both fans on, close the door like you would for painting, walk around the shop holding a string so I can see how much air moves and where? Uh, I mean... I'm not really worried about air as long when I'm painting, I just turn this thing on, close my garage door, close the door that goes into the kitchen of my house. Okay. Cause this is, that's literally the kitchen. Um, and this door I'll actually leave cracked open because it's not enough. Unless I cut another hole and put another filter, I'm depriving the ventilation by that one filter. It's just not enough. I didn't change it yet. It looks a little dusty. I should change that out. But I'll leave this open like two inches when I'm painting. I'll turn the fan on, shut the garage door, and it literally sucks everything out. Strong flow coming through there. And it's just clean air coming through. So I'm not 
it, I haven't had any major issues, but when I paint a full car, um, I'll probably do it in a spray booth over at my friend's shop. Um, but I could, I would feel confident to paint it here actually. Um, YouTube newbie, Tony, this morning I tried to purchase the VIP for 47 and will let me purchase VIP lifetime for 12 months. So tell me how I can still purchase that package. Um, I'm not sure. Did you try with PayPal or credit card? Let me know. Um, you should be able to get the offer. It's still up. Um, you might want to just resubscribe to learn auto body and paint.com. So you can get to that page again to try it again, because, uh, once you subscribe to the free trainings here, I just sent you the link. Um, the next page, we have a special offer to join VIP for an annual subscription of 47, which is like $3 and 50 cents a month, which is less than a cup of coffee nowadays. Uh, for all the exclusive content, free giveaways, and VIP support. So try that. If anything, if you're still having an issue, Jeffrey, my support team will, will gladly help you out. You can just reach to them at ninja support at learnautobodyandpaint.com. You could even email Tony at learnautobodyandpaint.com. All right, bro. I've never had an issue where painting multiple panels apart i mean that's exactly what i'm going to be doing here painting all these pieces apart right as long as you're mixing the same paint the same batch spraying the same you know same that day with the same paint mixture you shouldn't have any color match issues unless you're doing candy and you're just putting an extra coat or two on one of the panels versus another or you know what i mean that's the only way you're going to really get a color difference but if you're just shoot, shooting straight base coat, you should not see a color difference, no matter how many coats of base coat you put on it, okay? Um, no matter how many coats after coverage, okay? Yeah, so you're gonna be fine and we're gonna be doing, you know, these little, how many panels we got? We got four big panels here, okay? The sides, front, head, headlight area, and then these little pieces that go on the uh, muffler and front fork. Um, so again, guys, I'm going to be going live in the next couple days. I'm going to get all of my candy colors on the bench here. I have more up on the shelf over there. Okay. We're going to get all of our candy colors and we're going to do a vote on what color, uh, to paint this 1998 classic Honda elite moped, which I love. It runs excellent. There's only 900 miles on it. I love this moped. It's great. Um, I'm thinking tangerine orange. Where is it? Or maybe a magenta. Tangerine orange or a magenta with black graphics. Black striping graphics. Where is it? Uh, do I have my... Uh, I got... And I have actually have purple candy coming. Do you have your own mixing setup? No, I don't. So if I order paint, if I order paint, I'll just order at the local uh, paint supply house here. You know, I could give them the color code. I can give them a body panel of the car to color match. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I do. Uh, the van project, we will also have you guys pick out the color. I'm thinking of green, uh, like a military hunter green with like a white, white striping or pearl white striping we're going to do a two-tone single stage and i'm going to do something i've never done before uh with single stage so we're going to document the process i'm going to share the results and i'm going to let you know how that comes out i think it's actually going to come out really well so i have a new idea in mind of doing a two-tone on a single stage normally if you're doing two tones you're going to want to do it with base coat clear coat two three tones or whatever you know um, but we're going to try it with single stage. I'm pretty confident that it's going to be okay. And, uh, we'll test it out on the van. If anything, we're going to learn a bunch, but, uh, I I'm confident it's going to come out great. Old. You'll be fine. Just did that on a bike, Tony with single stage and clear coated over it. So basically I think Arnold, you know what I'm talking about. I'm basically going to shoot my single stage on it. Let it dry for about a, maybe a couple days, three days, four days, let it cure. Um, 
mask out my graphic area with fine line tape, okay? Cover what I don't want painted. Wax and grease the new paint. I'm not even gonna sand it. We're just gonna lay new paint right on top of fresh paint. I don't think we need to sand it because it's still fresh paint. I think it's still gonna bond without sanding. Um, that's how I'm gonna do it. And then I'm not gonna clear coat it. It's gonna just be another single stage. It's kind of like pinstriping. When people pinstripe, they don't sand. They just pinstripe right on top of clear coat or a single stage and it's fine. So I'm thinking it's going to be fine. We're just going to have some light pinstriping on the van, pearl white or white, you know, whatever I decide on doing single stage. And then what we could do with the, uh, with the color difference, you know, the, the, the basic, the outline is I could pinstripe it or I could leave it alone. So that's what I plan on doing. I'm not going to put clear coat on top of it. Obviously it's a huge van. So there's no way I'm going to be doing all that paint for that thing. We're just going to be doing a single stage on it, get it on looking glossy and wet mask up graphics spray the single stage done i think it's going to be okay so that's the plan on the van the van project um yeah guys rich carlos says can or have you done roof painting suv if what is the link Yes, we have a complete SUV that we did. Um, it's the actual CRV project in VIP, Carlos. Um, and we have a whole step-by-step -step process on that as well. So seriously, if you haven't, at least get the free training here at Learn Auto Body because we do guide you to other videos on the channel. Like, you know, we'll be color, we'll be covering like how to how to properly mask. You could click the link from within the book. And it'll take you to one of our free videos on the blog or on YouTube. Pretty cool. It's it's set up really nice. Took a long time to set that manual up. And we just revised it like a year ago. So it's pretty fresh. Um, okay, EB, I'm getting, I'm getting to the questions, guys. Bro, one question. My car has been sprayed 10 years ago um, by House of Color. I want to retouch some paint chips. Do I respray the whole car or touch it up? I just, and do I just primer and candy color? Or need well if the paint is 10 years old i would think you'd probably just want to reshoot the whole thing over again because the touch-ups anytime you're doing a touch-up like rock chips i don't know what kind of touch-up you're talking about you know painting the front half you know touch up with a brush filling in rock chips i don't know what what you're talking and depending on if the car has been sitting in sunlight for a while it's probably faded by now um you're probably going to want to reshoot the whole thing if it was a house of color, I'm guessing it's like some sort of a custom candy color or a can or a custom color. I'm doing a home job. EB, I would also recommend you to check out learnautobodyandpaint.com and drop the link over here. Grab some free training, bro. Uh, we got a lot of organized content over there for you. So pinstriping, okay, over clear, but you have to sand scuff clear over the stick and last. Well, pinstriping it's an enamel. So it's not going to come off right away. Right. So that's what I'm thinking when I do, you know, a new fresh coat of paint on unsanded single stage, I think it's going to be okay. Actually, it's just like a giant pinstripe is what we're doing. Right. So I'm going to try it without sanding it. We're just going to lay it on. All right. Uh, do I have neighbors that complain about the paint odor when I'm painting in the garage? I don't. Um, and I used to paint in a in a more crowded, you know, subdivision housing housing area where the houses were basically on like five to six thousand square foot lots. Like I had a neighbor right there, right there. But if you're cool with the neighbors and you tell them, "Hey, I'm going to be painting a little something in my garage," you know. Um, Maybe move, uh, but you know, I did paint, I, I didn't really paint full cars, but I painted a half a car in my little garage um, and no real issue. Fortunately, I'm on, I'm on an acre lot. So my neighbors are pretty far, you know, they're far away right now. So I haven't had any issues with that. And I think a lot of it has to do with you being cool with your neighbors as well. You know, just be cool with them. Um, if they have a car right next door to you and you're painting, I would tell them, Hey, I'm going to be spraying something in my garage, uh, maybe just move your car over. Cause I mean, you're allowed to, to do some hobby, 
hobby work in your own home garage where you live. You know, it's not illegal to to have a little hobbyist workshop and paint some cabinets or a motorcycle or whatever you're doing, right? You just got to be cool with your neighbors. Um, but I do think if you're if you're going to be painting a full car, huge car, or maybe single stage, you know, you got single stages is, is nasty. You know, base coat clear coat is not that bad, but single stage creates a lot of overspray and it really gets on the floors. It gets sticky. You're walking around and it's like back, 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 back. You know, you got your shoes. If you're wearing white shoes, it'll turn the color of your, if you're painting red, you'll have, you'll end up with pink shoes. If You know, um, even if you have good ventilation, you will get overspray like that. So, and I was thinking of doing the van in my backyard just for video purposes and for VIP guys. You know, I could easily go to my friend's shop and spray it in the booth, but I'm thinking, hey, wouldn't it be cool to just shoot it under a tent? And I do have tent paint jobs in VIP that we did a while back that I show you, you know, how we got a glossy paint job. A tw we call it the 24 hour El Cheapo paint job. We body worked it, painted it within 24 hours under a tent. And that whole project is in VIP as well. But I might do the van in the backyard on a nice day, you know, just, just blast it in the middle of my backyard. Um, I'm getting ready to paint my Willys Wagon Metallic Copper single stage. Then I'm painting the recessed panels with a satin black over the copper. What do you think? I think that's going to look tight. I think that's going to look very, very tight. Um, what you could do is like what Arnie did is sand it. Okay. Sand the areas where you're going to be doing your satin black and then clear coating the whole thing. You know, you could do that. Uh, you know, you could do that. Uh, repainting some parts, but don't want to have to sand all the paint off to repaint. The paint is in good condition to change the color. Can I sand and then paint over? Yes, absolutely. You could, uh, just keep in mind a good, decent single stage or base coat paint job is a good foundation to accept a new layer of paint. Okay. Whether you're doing single stage again, um, or a base coat, clear coat. Okay. Uh, like this, this is, this you could paint right over, but because I broke through a little bit, you know, some pl raw plastic, I might just prime some areas on it. Um, if you break through to plastic or raw metal, like this whole piece we're priming, it's, it's, it's good practice to prime. All right. Sometimes, you know, if you have a little bit like this, you could just get away with just basing it, but don't base too thick over it because you will, and you could get a chemical reaction of it biting, not sticking properly and, uh, wrinkling up. Okay. So the key is light coats. Like I could base this sucker straight and get away with it, but I don't want to do that. I want to put fresh primer, but you could get away with it as long as you spray light coats over and over. If you spray a heavy coat of base on this, I guarantee you will have chemical reactions in between. Okay. From the raw plastic area, the clear, you can see the clear looks white. Um, into the paint area, you're going to get a little bit of uh, biting or paint lifting. Just bought an X9 Atom spray gun. Is there a PPS adapter available so I can use disposable cups? Unfortunately, not for the side feed spray guns. Um, I do have one as well, but the only thing you could do, where is it? I think it's in my bus. I always have guns all over the place. Unfortunately, with the side feed, you have to use the side feed cup. There are no adapters for the side feed spray gun. I'm sorry. Um, VIP from Fort Lauder Lauderdale, Florida. I'm working on my Toyota Sequoia running boards. They are plastic. I have two questions. One is, can I clear coat the running board and not have it peel? Um, I so you're talking about raw plastic. You want to clear coat raw plastic? Actually, I've never done that. Um, I don't think I don't think you're gonna have an issue. Um, I would wax and grease it, clean it, make sure it's super clean. Spray a very light coat of adhesion promoter, okay, very light, and then clear coat it if that's what you want to do. But if I were you, I would sand it with 400 grit, scuff it by hand, 400 grit wet sand. 
um, 2K filler prime it to get rid of the texture, okay? Wet sand it smooth and then put your base coat clear coat on it. That's what I would do. I wouldn't clear coat raw plastic. I mean, put a color on it at least. If you want black, then put gloss, you know, put black, black on it so you get a gloss black. Um, but you could water sand the raw plastic, put adhesion promoter. If you want to skip the 2K primer step, put adhesion promoter right on the raw plastic and then put base coat clear coat right on top of it. Or you could single stage right on top of it, but you should, re it's recommended to put this on it. Okay. Exclusively for polyophene plastic. How can I remove deep scratches on the running board? Uh, basically 2K filler primer. So prep it down, 2K filler prime it. Henry, aren't you VIP? We do have step-by-step -step videos preparing and painting raw plastic. Use base clear coat, I'm cool with neighbors and I try and accommodate them. So I spray early in the morning. Another way guys to get cool with your neighbors is actually do some jobs for them. Like I literally did at my other home um, down, in, down in town, my ho in Hawaii, like the house where I grew up, I painted, I live in a cul-de-sac. There's like seven homes. I painted cars for three of the three of my neighbors. Uh, full paint job on my left side, full paint job on my right side, and a touch up on my uh, my landscaper neighbor a couple houses away. So that how because they see me do you know they they saw me growing up doing this. You know I was literally 13, 14, 15, coming out with cool paint jobs all the time on like these motorcycles and these mopeds. You know, and then they saw me. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 with the coolest cars, coolest paint jobs, candy paint jobs, classics, you name it. And they're like, dude, how much, you know, how much to paint my car? Like, I need a touch up, hook me up. So that's another thing, you know, if, you're, if your neighbors know what you do and, and you're cool with them, they will give you work. You know, I've gotten work from my neighbors. So be cool with people. Don't be a dick. Like I, anytime I move into a new neighborhood, it's not like I move into a new neighborhood all the time, but I had to do it in Texas. Right. And I had to do it here. We moved out here about a year, about a year ago to my new location here. You know, I literally got crisp. Like it was like Christmas time when I moved here, I got Christmas gifts for all my neighbors, like surrounding me. And I gave them some cookies and Hey, we're your new neighbors, blah, blah, blah. If you need anything, let me know. I do this you know, you introduce yourself. So you got to be cool. I am trying to spray my Land Rover Santana 1984. I have a three horsepower compressor using a 988982 gun hold two bar for a while. The compressor cut takes two. Well, any answers? Man, um, I'm thinking you might need a larger tank size. Anytime you're spraying a full car, or a big project, you need air volume, okay? You need the backup storage of air volume. This is why I recommend at least a six, um, 60 gallon is all you need. 60 gallon tank, you know, something that puts out a decent amount of CFM, okay? This is only 11 at 90, 11 and a half, 40. We're not even spraying at 40, okay? Normally you're at 25. So this, is, this number is gonna be higher, okay? And this is a 3.7 horsepower. The other one in Texas I had was a five horsepower. This one's much better, much quieter. I paid like eleven or twelve hundred dollars for my Bel Air air compressor. I picked this up at Cobalt at Lowe's for like six or seven hundred bucks. Best sixty gallon compressor I ever had. Seriously, quiet, and I like it. Panel, how do I mask out the rest of the car to blend paint and clear without a hard line? So. Yep. So um, we do have step-by-step -step videos of this in VIP. Please check out learnautobodyandpaint.com. But um, we we just did something like this on the BMW project um, where we painted the front bumper cover and blended into the fender and clear coated the whole fender. So you have to blend into the next panel, your adjacent panel, and then clear coat that whole panel uh, to get a good blend. Okay. And it's also you know, spray gun technique is okay. Follow up quick question. It has good condition paint and clear on it. Solvent base now repainting with water-based paint. Any issues with that? Uh, and what grit? So you always want to paint over 400 grit. It's a really good grit, uh, to accept new base coats. Um,
If you're painting single stage, you could even finish off with like a 320 grit and you'll be fine. Okay, you go a little coarser, you go a little rougher. You don't have to be as, you know, fine and as meticulous prepping if you're painting a single stage versus a, a two stage. Uh, what can I wipe it off with without hurting the paint? I use single stage enamel. You can just get a clay bar, any clay bar, Amazon it. Um, they also sell them at Zula.com is where I get a lot of my automotive stuff. Our, this is our partner site here. Um, I'll drop the link for you. They have a clay bar. Just search clay bar. Um, and you basically, you could just... We have videos in VIP as well. We have videos on our channel on how to use a clay bar. So clay bar will take overspray off um, painted panels. If you got overspray on it, you mix a solution of dishwasher soap and water. Um, you know, like a very few drop, few drops in a gallon. You know, here's what I do. So I have some Dawn here. Um, I don't know. It's probably like that much of Dawn in it. Very little, not much, you know, maybe like two, two tablespoons worth. And then I fill it up with water and then you could use this to just pour on your panel and just get the clay bar and just comes right out. Um, they try to sell you solutions, but you don't need to buy it. This, you know, dish soap works perfect. I do basically clear coat on an engine block and manifold heaters. Uh, the manifold, yeah, you could, you could just make sure you prep it really well and prime it. I would put a 2K primer on it, make sure you sand it really well, and uh, and you can shoot basically clear coat. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, if you want to kind of like go safer and not have to worry about it ever chipping then just get the uh the heat paint the 500 degree heat paint um forgot what, what brand makes that you guys know what i'm talking about du is it duplicolor maybe but yeah it would be excellent can you buy a bigger tank for bigger can you buy a bigger tank for compressor than put three horsepower motor on it um, yeah, I've had VIPs actually connect air compressors. I've, I haven't had the need to do it because I've always had a, a large enough air compressor, but you can hook up two thirty gallons just to give you a little bit more extra volume, you know? Um, but if you have a small horsepower, a one and a half horsepower or something, it's probably, it's still going to take a little longer to pump up, you know what I mean? And, uh, to replenish your, your air. Thanks guys for tuning in. I'll see you guys next week. Keep your eyes open for new videos. We got new videos coming out again shortly. Edwards, peace. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. We got new videos coming out. Like I said, uh, the content is being created as we go. Peace.